so in this particular location on this mast on the left, I currently have an antenna which is not being used. So I've been thinking lately, what antenna could I put here in its place? Now, if you're an owner of an ICOM 7100 or 7300, a Yaesu FTDX10 or a 710, or even the 101D models, then there's probably a band that you don't use. Well, especially if you're in Europe or have the European models of those radios. And that band is the 4 meter band at 70 megahertz. Now, I know the US side of the world does not have access to this band, but the list of countries is actually growing. The 4 meter wiki page provides some nice information about the band and its history and even an updated list of which countries support the 4 meter band and the bandwidth that they're actually allowed to use, as it's not the same in each country. So with all that in mind, I decided to install a 4 meter 70 megahertz vertical antenna. And while searching for an antenna, I come across this rather cheap vertical antenna that's sold by Moonraker here in the UK. In fact, they have a discount on this antenna right now, so it costs less than 30 UK pounds. So it was kind of hard to pass up on it. The reviews that was on the website looked pretty good and it wasn't stupidly large. The gain figures and power rating also seemed quite believable and it was within the specs that I actually needed. Now, four meters isn't used a great deal, but there is a slight increase in activity with some simplex nodes popping up around the country. Of course, you also have those contest days when the bands do go a bit crazy and also in the summertime when sporadic E happens. Now you may be wondering why I purchased that antenna instead of making one for the 4 meter band. Now in the past I have made various types of 4 meter antennas, ranging from verticals to dipoles and even a delta loop. In fact I made a video on making and then testing a delta loop antenna. And I'll leave a link down below if you want to go and watch that as well. However I just wanted something quick and easy to put together and then install on top of that mast to replace that other antenna. So I ordered the antenna, it arrived next day, which was nice because I absolutely hate waiting for things. And then I just proceeded to take the parts out of the packaging. Now there's a few parts here, but not overly a lot, and it's actually quite easy to put together. Now this is the base of the antenna, which fixes to the supporting mast. And if you look at the top yellow part of the antenna, there's actually three more connection points. And this is where the included radials attach to. Now there's three sections to the main antenna element and they screw into each other like this. Now there is also a screw which goes through the element and this stops it from spinning undone. Now I don't think I've seen this method before on antennas to keep the elements in line, but it's definitely most welcomed because, well, it's gonna work. Now screwing them together one-handed was a bit of a mission, you know, holding the camera and everything, but I did get there in the end and then I just screwed in that securing screw into place like this. Now the top part of the antenna has a smaller diameter than the middle section, but attaching it to the antenna is the same process. I just screw it on and then screw the little securing screw into place. Now this antenna is around two and a half meters in length, but as with all antennas, they look a bit smaller once they are up in the air. Well, that's at least what we tell our partners, right? Now lastly, I needed to attach the radials. There's three of these that are provided and there's three mounting points. Now at the end of each of the radials, you'll notice there's a thread. These just screw into the mounting part like this. And then once through, you can tighten up that tightening nut so that they don't kind of vibrate loose in the wind. Now I've done this for all of the three radials and then I'm left, well, with the finished antenna. Now lastly, I just needed to attach the mask clamps to the base of the antenna so that it's ready for when my antenna guy comes round to swap the antennas. Now I didn't have to wait too long, he came round a few days later, but my antenna guy, he turned up, installed the antenna. Now the coax I'm using to go between the base of the antenna and the radio, which incidentally is gonna be an ICOM IC7100. Now the coax was mini eight coax. Now it's not the best for 70 megahertz, but it's all I had accessible at the time, and the coax run is actually not that long. So the right of the right window there is actually where the radio will be. So you can see the coax length is not going to be too long. Now with the antenna up in the air, it was time to check the SWR. And this is a plot from 68 megahertz to 72 megahertz. And then at around 70.2 megahertz, we observe an SWR reading of just 1.2. 
In fact, it's very broad banded and around 1.2 across the entire band. Now, for those of you that like to see a wider span, then this reading is from 50 megahertz to 100 megahertz. And this kind of shows that it has a lower Q than, well, personally, I've seen on other antennas, but at least it covers the whole band. Now, before we try and make some contacts, I hooked up the RSPDXR2 to this and had a little scan around the four meter band. Now, incidentally, on the day that I had this antenna installed and the moment in which I turned on the receiver, I heard a station from Croatia calling CQ. So I quickly plugged in the antenna into the radio and made the contact. Now, unfortunately, I was not ready to make a recording or video recording. So I do apologize, guys. You'll just have to believe me on that one. Now, that contact was possible, most likely because of sporadic E and it only lasted a few minutes because for the rest of the day, I didn't hear any more DX on the band at all. In fact, I hardly heard anything. So it just goes to show where you can get to when those sporadic E conditions pop up. CQ, CQ contest, Golf 8, Foxtrot, Mike, Charlie, Germany 8, France, Mexico, Canada, CQ. Yeah, G4CIZ, thank you. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. G4 ZA. Yeah, very good. Uh, good morning. I think we can say that. It's uh, very nice out there. Um, about five and seven on the call. I don't know if I have my antenna towards you. Uh, 57. And uh, name here is uh, Keith. Uh, K I T H. And I'm located just to the east of uh, uh, Spalding in South Lincolnshire. And I don't think I've got my brain in gear yet. M0 DQW G4 of you. CQ, CQ, CQ contest. This is Germany Zero, Ocean, Denmark, Quebec. Calling contest and by. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. Thank you for the call. Nice loud signal. You're 5 by 9, number 6. Italy, Oscar, 91, Mexico, Radio. Postcode Oscar X ray, QSL. Yes, Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. Thanks very much indeed for your patience. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, uh, Whiskey. Booming in here. Uh, five nine number ten IO ninety one Oscar Quebec and postcode also Hotel Papar. Over over. Now as luck would have it, or did I just time it right? There was a four meter contest on, so plenty of activity on the band to test the antenna. Now nearly everyone in the contest would have been using beam antennas, which are obviously directional. They would have also been using horizontal polarization. And as I was using vertical polarization, there's around 20 dB loss with cross polarization. Now, with that said, I still managed to get a contact 73 miles away with a fairly modest signal report. And my QTH is only around 100 meters ASL, so I'm not particularly that high up and I'm surrounded by the Chilton Hills. Well, at least to the south of me. So I think that proves that the antenna is working quite well. And there are a few other nets which take place weekly on four meters, even a vertical SSB net on Mondays, I think. So I may try and get myself on one of those nets to see who else I can work. Now it's a little late in the year for a sporadic E, so I may have to wait until next year for some of those real DX contacts on the four meter band. Now, if you have a radio capable of using four meters, then give it a try. Even if you have to make your own antenna, it's still going to work. If you guys make your own antennas, let us know down in the comments which antennas you've made yourself. Have you gone for a vertical or maybe you've made a, a loop antenna, but have it polarized horizontally. Another good antenna, which I believe a lot of people have used is the J-Pole. So if you've used that, let me know how it works for you. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>